Right then, Jabs, been a while. Now, what you see before you here is a little collaboration between Lucas Burnley, who's a knife maker from New Mexico, and Boca Plus. Now, this is an affordable version of his folding quaken, or kraken, or quaken, however you want to say it. I like this knife, but there are some irks with it, and I shall bring them up later on. As you can see, the blade flies out there, it uses IKBS bearing system. Which to me, frankly, it opens no faster than the Spider Convention, which is just phosphor bronze pushing, but that's another matter. Burnley, three and a half inch OS8 stonewash blade, hollow ground, very steep hollow ground, so it's not that good a slicer. Practiced on some nice cardboard boxes and some cheese, and it did split. It's a, it's a, I think it's 3.2 millimeter thick, so it's not that thick, but it's a very, it's only half an inch uh, high, if that makes sense, or well, even three quarters of an inch. Let me see. A three quarters of an inch or just over. So it's a very steep hollow grind, which means it's not the easiest slicer in the world. Near the detent, very nice. Now the images you've probably seen in the States, I don't believe they've actually uh, arrived on the offshores yet, but they show us as a kind of a gunmetal gray micarta. It's listed as green, but it looks kind of gray. This is a more of a representation of it. It's like a kind of a deep green going into the brown, brown kind of realm. A sewage green in a way, but in a quite a nice way. I actually think it's quite a nice colour. And of course, because it's my car, so everyone will have a slightly different, different uh, grain, so to speak, in it. As you can see, it's because it's a very nice gentlemanly look, and especially with the elegance of it. It's a very elegant and compact package, weighing in about four ounces, 118 grams, I do believe, in European. Yeah, according to Boca, and I've my my weighing scales aren't that accurate, but it comes out about the same. As you can see, very elegant knife. But there are some quite bad issues with it, really. As I said, the uh, handle is about half, uh, three quarters of an inch thick this way. So is the blade. And as you can see, it's a complete flow through design. But this means that the back of the blade is very much exposed. You can not only see it, you can see the Rucasa there going off the edge, but you can feel the edge. It's a factory edge, so it's not slicing my finger. It came relatively sharp, but it's not grit, it's not biting sharp. When you do get it that sharp, you will most likely slice yourself just sliding your hand into your pocket or indeed holding the knife. You can feel the ricasso and it's going to bite one day. The worst one though is the tip. Now as you can see, it's completely flush. But your finger can still catch in there. Any kind of material with give will get into there. It's an incredibly fine point. As you can probably just about tell there, incredibly fine and unevenly ground, but never mind about that. And I sliced up some trousers yesterday, I just had this on my lap, pulled it out, and then rip, or more of a slice even. It really does bite in. So that may cause some issues in the future. If you ever get your finger well in there and for some reason brought it back, you will draw blood. It's catching, you might be able to hear this. You can even see my uh, finger material, my skin being sliced up by that, just breaking the skin, so it's not too bad. Another issue I have is the thumb studs. Are oh, the thumb studs even, or oh, well, they're just the thumb disc. Nicely uh, knurled, so relatively grippy, but they're not proud enough from the handle scales. You can see they're very much, well, they're way below the handle scales. Doesn't protrude enough, it's not grippy enough. There is a sweet spot, which is there. So it flies out on the IKBS bearings, but it's, t it's too unreliable. It's not a substantial enough thumb disc. So you can quite often just miss there we go, and it bloody canes. You can see it's been tearing up my thumb. I don't have some kind of skin disease. Hopefully. This is just from this uh, this from this from knife, trying to get my thumb thumb meat in there, so like that, and that really bloody canes. It just tears away the skin. So you've got to find the sweet spot, and when you do, of course, it flies out, but it's not reliable. What I do like, however, is the fact that for lefties, it's very lefty friendly. You can see it's the same distance from each handle scale, so it's just as difficult for lefties as it is for righties. Um, joking, of course. And uh, trouble is it's only for right up tip, uh, right hand tip up carry. So no accommodation for lefties, either tip up or tip down. So just tip up, which is, which kind of negates in a way the issue of the, uh, the point tearing into you. But on drawing, of course, so it, it's no issue for your, your handle, uh, for your skin when it's in your pocket, because it will be pressed against your seam of your pocket. When you draw it out, there's every chance that that blade could catch onto your trousers and slice them as it did mine. Another issue I have is this crappy little backspacer. 
some kind of black plastic which has been quite badly machined. You can see there are lines going down which don't have a problem with the lines across which are all quite badly done. And it's also proud of the, uh, of the liners there. Why they use black plastic? It's possibly polished G10, but it's been very badly polished over this G10 and it feels like, I don't know, crap plastic, if I must. Which is a shame, because had it been micarta or aluminium, perhaps, it would have been quite a nice touch to it, but it's just, at the moment, it just looks a bit cruddy. It looks like a cheap botch job. Which is a shame, because the rest of the knife is very nice indeed. I love how compact the package is. It's a very elegant looking knife. It's very nice detail, the way it's continued on from his custom version, the way the pocket clip reflects the angles on the uh, on the butt of the knife. Potential, I suppose, impact point there, but it's not sharp at all. But if you're into that kind of thing, perhaps that's of interest. Relatively generous lanyard hole. Very nicely finished. I like the way all the uh, torque screws, I think they're it's from like a 6.5 Torx. I, my, the Torx I use on this hasn't actually got a denomination on it. The, the number six and seven I have these ones do not fit inside it, so I use a 6.5, well it must be a 6.5. Very nicely stonewashed, arrived relatively sharp as I said. Came with a chip on the blade up there, which is a bit crappy for a knife that costs, what about $130, $140 I think, uh, over in the States when they do arrive. But all in all, uh, it looks, it's a very appealing package, it's just when you look down the details I noticed about the tip, the pull crappy backspace of the bad design of the thumb studs, the uneven grind. It's a very nice looking grind, the, the kind of lightning grind, but it's uh, it's uneven and as I said the tip is also uneven. Aside from that though, and I really do mean aside from that, I do really like this knife and I won't be letting this one go. I just like it too much and it's also numbered, it's number 83. As you can see there, so it's quite an early example. So in future, if they ever release a Quake and 2, I will definitely be getting a hold of that as well because those issues that I noted could be crucial for some, if you're a user, unimportant to others if you're just a collector. I'm a user and a collector, and frankly, when I'm using this, I'll just be careful with it. Because it's a pleasure to use, and it's very satisfying when you do manage to get that blade to fly out. Because it will uh, serve you well, it's very comfortable to hold in hand. I love the way the thumb, thumb disc acts like a thumb pad for you to rest your thumb on. No jimping, but I don't care. I don't like jimping. Thank you for watching, chaps. Any questions, as always, far away, and I shall do my best to get back to you. Cheers.